In this video, I'm gonna show you everything that I took with me on my four day hike, walking 78 miles around the Capital Ring Walk. <laughs> Chances are you're watching this video because you've watched another one of my videos of when I walked around the Capital Ring Walk and maybe you're thinking about doing it yourself. So I thought I'd put together everything that I took based on some questions that were coming at me through social media. I'll be taking you through everything from clothing, snacks, toiletries to electricals and also I might as well include the camera kit that I take with me on my adventures and everything that I'm including is written in a blog and in that blog is a downloadable PDF packing list which you can print off and use for reference for when you do your adventure. I'm going to start by talking what bag I took with me. I took the 511 mirror backpack which is a 25 litre backpack and I found that this fitted all my stuff in really really comfortably. I've been using 511 for many years. It's definitely not the lightest backpack but it's comfortable for me. What I would say is taking a backpack that you've been wearing for some time and you just know is comfortable. And the reason that I use the mirror is because it comes with a little add-on bag which you can either attach to the front or you can wear it as a cross body bag. And I wanted to keep my camera really, really close by. So I had my camera and my phone right here so then I could check the map and grab my camera whenever I needed. But if you don't have something like this, then maybe you might find a bum bag useful rather than taking off your backpack every time you wanna get something. Next, I'll move into what clothes I wore. And bear in mind, I did this in the summer. I looked at the weather forecast before I went. There was no chance of rain and it was between 34 and 36 every single day. So in that sense, it was really great because I didn't have to take winter jackets and fleeces. So we're going to cover a couple of options. I'm going to show you what I wore, but also what to consider taking if the weather wasn't like when I did it. I think the best place to start is footwear and do you wear trainers or do you wear hiking boots and I wore trainers I think that for this particular route hiking boots aren't necessary unless it is really really cold or rainy probably the mistake that I did make was I wore quite a flat non-grippy trainer and quite a lot of the route was in the woods and in trails and over stones and sticks and it didn't, did tend to hurt my feet a little bit by not having a thicker sole. So probably next time I do something like this, I'm gonna use something with a bit of a thicker sole. And I would say that just wear footwear that you've been wearing for a long time, that is really, really comfortable. If it hadn't have been super hot and maybe, mid to high 20s then I definitely warm, would have worn my hiking boots because they've got a decent sole and I always wear these for my multi-day challenges. I took two pairs of socks with me. I wore one for two days and then I wore the next pair for two days. If I'd have been away for any longer then the accommodation that I stayed in I just would have chucked a pair in the sink, give them a wash and chucked them on the radiator. Wear one, wash one. I love that approach. I did that with my underwear, wear one, wash one. And actually at one point they didn't dry in time. So I ended up just hiking through London with a pair of knickers hanging off my bag. But it did the trick. I had a clean pair ready for the next day. So as we're talking about underwear, women, you may want to consider what bra you wear. Men, you may also want to consider what bra you wear as well. I wear the Panache Sport. I wear this for all my adventures and all my fitness, so I know that it's gonna suit me. The main thing you wanna consider is the straps because you're gonna be wearing a backpack and there's gonna be some pressure coming in through your shoulders. You don't want those straps to dig in and cause irritation. Again, just like your footwear, wear something that you're used to, that you've been wearing for a long time and then you know that it's comfortable. For the hike, I wore a pair of Odlo lightweight running shorts. 
and I wear these quite a lot so I knew I was going to get on with these and then I wore a lightweight breathable odd low t-shirt as well and even though it was hot I decided to get quite a lot of coverage because I didn't want to get sunburnt and also this shoulder area is just going to give me a little bit of protection with carrying my backpack versus a vest where the line of the vest could potentially rub into my skin. But if you are going to do this in cooler weather, if it's raining, then you could potentially wear leggings or I really enjoy the Crag Hoppers Kiwi Pro trousers. They're lightweight, they've got a little bit of water repellent and I find these really, really comfortable on multi-day hikes and I've been wearing these for years. And then a long sleeve t-shirt to keep you warm. I really enjoy Icebreaker Merino wool because it's warm when it's a little bit damp. It doesn't tend to smell. And that's one thing to consider about this particular kit list is I only took one t-shirt and I wore it for the whole four days. I took one pair of shorts and I wore those for the whole four days. I absolutely stank at the end of it. If I'd have taken two lots, then I would just have to carry it and I'd just end up with a stinky pair of shorts and a t-shirt in my bag. And then if the temperature is really quite cool, then you might want to consider a fleece or a jumper just to keep you warm. In the evening, because it was hot, then I just slept in my underwear and I did take one t-shirt to sleep in. But also if I was going to have a meal in the restaurant at the accommodation, I didn't really want to be wearing my stinky t-shirt. So I just took a t-shirt to wear kind of socially let's call it but then I also wore it to bed even though during my hike I knew that it wasn't going to rain and it was really really hot I did take a really small windproof water repellent jacket just because I never knew if there was going to be a short downpour and actually I did end up wearing it because at the end of the day I was so so tired and some of the places that I was staying in they had their air conditioning on really really high because I was wearing my shorts and t-shirt I found that I was shivering so this came in really useful it's just a super tiny jacket and it gave me the confidence to just have it in my bag and then depending on what weather you're going to do the capital ring walk in then just depends on what jacket that you might want to take you might want to take something a bit more waterproof or just something a bit heavier and a bit bigger and then no matter what the weather then I recommend that you take a hat to suit the weather conditions I took a baseball cap because it was really, really hot and I wanted to protect my head from the sun. You might want to take a beanie hat just to keep you warm. And I really like this one because it's waterproof. And this is a sealskins hat. I didn't take it for this adventure, but it goes pretty much everywhere else with me. And then there's just three more things in the main kit list. We've got sunglasses and a buff. I found this really useful. First of all, I could wear it around my neck to protect it from the sun. If I got cold, I could have worn it around my neck again as a scarf. But also, what with COVID-19 at the minute, I also use this as my face mask if I needed to go into any shops. And then the final item is a dry bag where I kept my spare underwear, my spare socks and my sleep t-shirt. But this also, at the end of the trip, was really useful to use as a laundry bag. Next we'll move into toiletries and you can give or take some of these, definitely some of them you won't wanna take, but I'm showing you everything that I took. A toothbrush and toothpaste. I never buy those small travel toothpastes. I just think that it's a waste. I take one that's nearly empty and then roll it down with a bit of sellotape. If it's gonna be sunny, I take my sun protection and I use the Ultra Sun Sport SPF 50. It's really easy to put on and I put this on once in the morning and that was it. I didn't need it anymore. Super good, use it for all my adventures, if it's sunny, of course. I also have the matching lip balm, which can double up as like protection to put onto your nose. I think the next two products that I talk about are pretty much essential. And this is to take care of your feet during a 78 mile hike. The first product is something called Gurney Goo. And I've been using this during my multi-day hikes and adventures for years. And it 
is incredible. It's this kind of waxy balm. It's made of silicones and tea tree. And what that's gonna do is help prevent blisters, but also help fight against things like athlete's foot. And you put this on the evening before you do your hike and it kind of waterproofs your feet, which means that if it's gonna rain or if you're gonna have really, really sweaty feet, then it kind of stops your feet from going all shriveled up. The silicones in there, when you put it on again in the morning, are gonna prevent your feet from rubbing against your socks, your boots, your shoes, and prevent the blisters. And then the tea tree just keeps all of those nasties away. That is incredible. And then for the real problem areas, then you've got Compede. And I took the medium size, which I just think are so versatile. I use these as a preventative because I find that the socks and the gurney goo are just a great combination for preventing blisters. That's the darn tough socks. I just, I just don't get blisters with them. If there are any little sore spots or hot spots, then I just whack this straight on and I find that I don't have any problems with my feet. And this brings me onto my next piece on the kit list. That is Tolkien powder. And I think no matter what the weather, then your feet are always gonna get a little bit damp. And so to throw a little bit of Tolkien powder in halfway through the trip, just to dry your feet off, this will be especially useful if you're trying to put a compede on. Trying to put a compede on a wet foot is near on impossible. So instead of taking a whole big bottle like this, then you can just put a tiny little bit in a bag like this. Antibac gel is especially relevant right now where we've got COVID-19 in the world. I always take a little bottle of this everywhere I go, especially on adventures. For pain relief, I take these two. These are CBD oil patches on everyday day-to-day -day life, I do take CBD oil underneath my tongue, but I didn't want to take an oil in my bag. I didn't want the risk of it leaking in my bag. So I put on one of these patches every two days. Usually I put it on my arm and then I get a constant stream of CBD into my bloodstream. But also you can put these on any local areas. So one particular day, my calf was really, really hurting. So I put a patch on my calf and I found that because it has anti-inflammatory properties then it just helped relieve a little bit of pain and also I take the Arnica cooling gel which I use an old one just so it's slim line and there's not much left and at the end of every day I just rub a little bit of this into my legs into my feet and into my ankles and that is anti-inflammatory it's really good for aches and pains and because it's cooling then it just helps take a little bit of the heat out when you've been on your feet all day and then women don't forget if you need any of these because I got caught short and I had to stop off at a shop so I think it's always useful to just have two or three in your bag and then finally if you've watched any of my videos you'll notice that on the final day of my adventures then I take some eco friendly glitter just to celebrate what I'm doing and for the toiletry section I forgot to mention I haven't bought any soap or shower gel or shampoo or anything like that because all of the accommodation that I stayed in did have products for me to use. Next we'll talk about snacks and I'll start off with showing you the water bottle that I take with me. It's just a Camelback one litre and the thing that I like about the bag that I showed you earlier is that it fits in the side. I took some dried mango and some salted peanuts, but mostly I just stopped off when I walked past the shop to grab a snack. And then my two main meals were my breakfast and my evening meal in the places that I was staying. I take the next two things on most of my adventures and just taking a couple of diorolite sachets I think is really good practice. When doing an adventure sometimes it's easy to forget to drink enough water or you can't get enough water so if you're just feeling a little bit peaky in the evening or the morning this normally sorts me right out. And then when things get a little bit tricky and I've been walking for a little bit too long and I still have maybe five or 10K to walk, then I have a caffeine bullet and this is 100, mili 100 
milligrams. Whatever the unit, it's about the equivalent to two cups of coffee. So I just have one of them and it's just a bit of a morale boost and some energy to get me to my destination. But I only use these in a bit of an emergency. Now I don't do it a lot, but when I do it, I do it painkillers electrolytes and some caffeine tablets check out this march go on little tea some other things to consider are some painkillers some paracetamol or some ibuprofen just a pack of that chucked in your bag not necessary but food for thought if you love your tea and coffee you might want to take a reusable flask because when you're staying in your accommodation then you could nick a full flask of coffee and take that with you throughout the day or you can use this throughout the trip if you're going to stop off at a coffee shop means that you don't have to get disposable cups this is a bit of a random one it's just an empty lunch box there are so many blackberry bushes along the way that I ended up filling this little lunch box with quite a few. Also, you can steal some fruit, some croissants, some muffins, whatever you want from the buffet breakfast. Keeps the fruit from getting squashed in your bag. I always take my little spoon. If I was gonna stop off at a snack stop and get a salad box, then I don't wanna be using plastic or wooden spoons. Doubles as a bottle opener. Everyone's a winner. Moving into the other section, don't forget your wallet or your purse. If you want, take a watch. You may want to use a digital watch. I took just a standard watch because I didn't want to be looking at distance and pace. Mobile phone is the next item and I used the Komoot app in order to navigate my whole way around the 78 miles. Take the next right. I've made the route public, which I've linked in the description box, that if you're thinking about doing the Capital Ring Walk, click the link, you can download the route straight to your phone and use it offline. So I just had my phone in my little bag and I had the volume up really loud. So I just basically knew where I was going because there were certain parts of London that I didn't want to be just walking around with my phone. A few of the next things is just personal preference if you take or not. I took a small book, a pen and a highlighter just so in the evening I can relax. On day to day life, I take these things in my bag with me. I've got a small knife. I've always got a couple of cable ties in my bag. Just never know when you're gonna need a cable tie. Maybe a shoelace might break or something on my backpack might break. So a couple of cable ties and then some gaffer tape, which is taped around an old Oyster card. And again, if anything breaks, then I've got some gaffer tape. And then moving into our electricals, which I split into two parts. First part, I think most people will need. And the second part is more specific to what I take. So moving into the basics, the battery pack. And I really enjoy the Power Traveller because they're adventure proof and they're drop proof. They're waterproof within a certain capacity and what I've done I've attached a charging cable this is made by life proof and this too is adventure and waterproof which you can screw off and that is a phone charger and it just means that I'm not crawling through my bag to find the wire that everything I need is attached together Super cool, super easy. I think though, potentially life proof, I've started to discontinue this. If it's not discontinued, I will add that into the blog where you can find that. I take a couple of plugs to charge my phone and my battery pack. I take wired headphones. Typically I like wireless, but I just wanna keep charging time down however on this adventure i didn't even use them and then finally to round up the video is the electrical things that i take on my adventures and this is quite a new addition to my adventure kit it's a 360 camera this is just an old sock which i put over the top and it just protects the camera. If you haven't got a 360 camera, then you might just want to use a GoPro or an action camera, something like that. 
and again the sock over the top of a GoPro works a treat and the accessories that I've got with the 360 camera is the invisible selfie stick and the bullet time handle which produces shots like this. I took the charging cable for the 360 camera. I also took a 64 gigabyte micro memory card. I didn't need it, but it's always nice to not be restricted on footage and worrying about running out of memory. Then I took my Sony FV1, which I'm filming on right now. Here's the Sony, and it was the first time that I used this camera on the adventure. Usually during my adventures, I use a GoPro. I was pretty impressed with this, but not so much impressed with the stability, which is why in the main video, you might have noticed some of the video is quite shaky. So I'm not sure if I'm gonna use this for an adventure again, but I'm such a good camera, perhaps I'll do a review video of it in the future. And then to go along with this camera, I bought some spare batteries because the camera does tend to churn up the batteries, but I found that I was only going through two a day. I took a spare 64 gig memory card and I actually went through one and a half, so it was definitely worthwhile taking another one of these. I've got the little fur attachment which stops the wind blowing on the microphone because I just used the standard in-camera microphone and then to put all of my electrical kit in everything that I've listed out all the wires the batteries bullet time handle everything fitted into this lunch box and I really like these lunch boxes because it keeps everything together it's pretty much watertight and these cost about £2.50 and when I want to get something because it's see-through it means that I can get to it straight away. So that's everything that I took on my 78 mile adventure and I was really really happy with my kit. The only thing that I do differently would just be to add a little bit more protection on the sole of my feet with my footwear. I really hope that you found this video useful and that you can transfer some of the things that I take on my adventure into your adventure. And I am thinking about doing this style of video for all of my adventures. So let me know if you think that that would be useful. If you're thinking about doing the Capital Ring Walk or you've done something similar, then please drop me a comment. If you wanna see everything that I've written today in a written form, then head to my blog. I have put that in the description box and I'll put some other videos on screen right now that I think that you might like. And thank you very much for watching. <laughs>